Hello, welcome back to Manor Park. This is the first of three walk around videos for our sale on Saturday, the 22nd of April. We have so many lots, we've got 140 lots. And because of that, I'm gonna to have to do three car videos of which this is number one and a separate bike video because we have so many cool things to talk about. And without further ado, let's get into it. Walk through this amazing field of bikes. There will be a separate video for that, I promise you. On to this, the first lot to talk about. Now the most fish and chips classic in the world is the Morris Minor, but that doesn't make them any less wonderful or beautiful or brilliant and easy to drive and easy to maintain and easy to own. They are one of the most wonderful classics, literally because they made so many. Spares arrive the next day, everyone can fix it, and they're just beautiful. This is a traveler, of course, a 1000. It's been with a current owner for 32 years. And it's had a comprehensive restoration, including what looks like very nice and very expensive wood. That's been done beautifully probably better than when it was new. Our guys say, they've had a look at this, probably the best one they've seen, it's certainly the best one we've ever consigned. And say the fact it's been with the same owner for 32 years, major bodywork, brand new Firestones, and if you look inside, just utterly, utterly lovely. Just super nice. Now I don't know what they spent on this, I would wager looking at the quality of the work, well into five figures. Yet yeah, you could buy that, we've estimated this, 6,000, to £8,000. Again, if you're coming into the world of classic cars for the first time, if you're looking for something that's a bit of fun, that's easy to use and easy to live with, get yourself a Morris Minor. Absolutely wonderful. It's a great way to start into the hobby. And of course, because everyone's had one, every time you fill up with petrol, everyone wants to talk to you. Talking of usable classics, I have a huge amount of love for this. A Chevette, a Chevette 1980 1.3L. We had one of these as our second family car. We had a Ford Sierra and a Chevette and I adore them. I think the best shape is the two-door. Very pretty, nicely proportioned, Wayne Cherry car. Europe got the Cadet, we got the Chevette, which had the aero front, which only Vauxhall had. I think it's a cooler looking thing. 87,000 miles, it's had paint, and my God, someone spent some money on this paint. This is a very expensive paint job on a Vauxhall Chevette. I don't know who's painted it, but I would like their number because it's really, really good. Really good, actually. That is not the quality of paint job I would expect on an old Vauxhall Chevette. This is kind of top-end show car quality paint. So kudos to you, sir or madam, if you painted it. Interior's lovely. What can I say? Factory spec, comprehensive history. You never see them anyway. You would spend 15 grand to put one in this condition. That one is six and a half to seven and a half. And I think it's unspeakably cool. It's on the road style wheels. Nothing to do. And I cannot stress enough, guys, the quality of paint on this car. Come and have a look. It's exceptional, exceptional car. I adore this. If you can't afford an early Mini because they're getting really expensive now, perhaps even rarer, even cooler, is a Wolseley Hornet. This is a nice 46,000 miles, which we are 99.9% .9 sure is credible. Two former keepers, manual car. We think it's one of the nice ones available. It's had a few later custom touches, which are either your cup of tea or not. So these are later arches. The purists may want to take those off. And again, on the inside, it's a non-period correct, but no less lovely. Someone's kind of gone for like a Bentley experience in here, haven't they? So there's a really nice diamond stitched interior. It's all been done very well to an incredibly high standard and very, very nicely. Had a restoration in 2018. It's got the handbook. It just is really, really nice. Again, someone has spent a huge amount of money. You just never see these, do you? What they are, in case you hadn't guessed already, is basically a mini with a pretentious front and a boot. But for that reason, I think they are one of the nicest and most interesting and collectible of all the BMC cars. We're estimating that one at 10 to 12. I think it's particularly lovely. It's little saloon vibes, isn't it? And you never see them. This is hilarious. I want to find the person that built this car and shake them warmly by the hand because this, to me, is exactly what a good resto mod should be. This is a 1962 Riley 1.5 litre, but the wheels are giving you the little vibe here. I think they're actually Formula Ford wheels, you know. I've got a sneaking suspicion. Have a look. I, I think that's a Formula Ford race wheel, which just adds to the kudos of this car. Look inside, look. This is not how it left the factory, look. Here's your first clue. Your first clue is some really cool bucket seats, 57,000 miles. It's got a 1622 MGA spec engine with an overbore. This is a 100 brake horsepower car. It's also got billet camshafts, pist sexy pistons. It's got a very nice light and flywheel. It's got a big Weber on it. It's got a Ford Sierra gearbox, adjustable spec stampers. It's got uprated brakes. 
it's just what a clever build because for most people in the street they're not going to know that's anything other than a nice old Riley until you fire it up with your 100 brake horsepower I'd imagine this thing goes sideways very nicely but so subtle ultimate sleeper ultimate cue car very very nice resting mod probably much more usable every day than the standard car so something you can turn up at any car show the resto crowd will welcome you the modified crowd will welcome you and you'll be going quite fast that's amazing nine thousand to ten thousand pound you could buy that again if you sum up the parts of the car you could not build it for twice that and someone has done an awful lot of work look at this you can just see lines and lines and lines of info if you're interested in this car do take some time to go on the website or call the team or even better we've got three more days of viewing when this goes out come and have a look that's amazing here's one i'm i think it's because i'm getting old i'm 50 this year i'm suddenly finding stuff from the 20s and 30s really really attractive and this is something i would very much like to own this is a 1929 ford model a four-door sedan it's got the 3.3 engine which is the one everybody wants it's got matching lucas tires luggage rack on the back it's got a rear blind what's nice about this one left hand drive which i never mind because it's from california IA. which what does that tell you guys if it comes from a dry state in america the bodywork is really really nice and it's really nicely patinated it's a haircut look so it's good it's obviously been restored a long long time ago and it has sat in this paint and trim for an unfeasibly long time and to me it's the perfect condition for a car like this because it's neat it's tidy it's very very presentable but it's not perfect got some lovely patination on the headlight bowls my little welsh friend will be getting very excited about that the paint has aged in a wonderful way and i just think you could have so much fun and being a four-door with a decent trunk on the back again a very practical usable car we're only estimating this at 10 to 12 and that's the beauty of 20s and 30s stuff unless it's something like a bentley or a, a provenance race car or something like we're going to come to later like a fraser nash bmw they're not worth huge amounts of money which means they're a huge amount of fun for not a lot of money i like that very much and i hope you do too register if you fancy that take the family out chug along anyone that knows me knows my first love probably my last love and my eternal love is always air called volkswagens i've never had a car gear which i think is inexcusable because they are the most beautiful of all air-cooled Volkswagens to my mind. If you don't know the story of the Kármán gear, basically this is a Beetle Type 3 in a party frock. So engineering by the Germans, coachwork and building by gear of Turin. So that's where you get this beautiful shape. And what's mad about these, I think they're probably prettier than a lot of contemporary Porsches. I mean, if you could either have a Porsche 912 or you could have this, I would wager that's a prettier body. I think that's a much more svelte coupe. They still are surprisingly affordable. This one, we've estimated at 16 to 18, so 21,000. It's a left-hand drive, import car. It's got the Fouche wheels on. It's got a motor litre wheel. It's got a refurbed 1641 with twin Cadron carbs on it. New discs and drums. It's gone through an MOT. It's pretty much a no-questions car, that one. I mean, Volkswagens are wonderfully reliable anyway. It's got very, very nice bodywork. Great wheel choice, perfect stance. 1641 engine, so it will bowl along in traffic. What a pretty car. And I say for 16 to 18, think of the Porsche you could buy of the same period for 16 to 18 grand. It wouldn't look as pretty as that. And you'd need to spend a load on it. That, put some fuel in it, polish it, insure it with our friends at Haggerty, take it home. Now this, you might be thinking, oh, it's the Trekker from Savage Hunter's Classic Cars. It isn't, but it is absolutely identical. So we did one of these on the show and we also did it in apple green, which I think is the best color for Trekker. It's just so much fun. It's a 1970s color. It really pops and it makes it look like the big toy that it actually is. Again, if you don't know much about a Trekker, well worth a Google. Basically made as a successor to the Kubelwagen, which was the Second World War vehicle. Volkswagen did this for the Dutch military and then thought, well, we've made so many. Let's paint them bright colors, jack them up and make them a lifestyle vehicle, mainly for America. So which is why most of the ones you find of these are left-hand drive. This one is very unusual. It's a factory right-hand drive. Very early chassis, genuine right-hand drive. It's the sixth Trekker bought into the UK. And why these are fun, it's a bit like a Citroen Mahari kind of vibe. So you can take all the doors off. It's the ultimate beach wagon. It's a factory beach buggy, basically, but with four seats, decent roof. This one's got the duck boards in, which is very nice to have. Eight to 12 grand. So the one we did on the show, we did a full resto. I can't remember, we sold ours. I was just 20 odd grand, you know, left hand drive, sold it to a guy in Spain. It didn't look much different to this. I think there was a bargain afoot, guys, and right hand drive, so much easier to live with if you're not used to left hand drive. Love that. Can't tell you how rare, can't tell you how rare a right hand drive tracker is. You just never find them, and you never find them in this condition at sensible money. So if you want something fun for the summer that you won't lose your shirt on, 
And again, it's just a beetle underneath. Different suspension, different arms, but the engine and most of the motive parts, you can run that on about five pence a year and fix it with a broken spoon. Brilliant car. 1989 Ford XR3i, I think we, it's part of our planning permission on this building that we can't have a sale unless we have a white XR3i in. They just look so good, don't they? RS Turbo was, of course, the poster child that everybody wanted, but the one that everybody bought, because it was slightly better value, is this, the 1989 Ford XR3i. Very pretty car. So it's got 19,000 showing, but I think there is a book change. Do check the history on that. It's had a little bit of work done to it. Fabulous history, factory standard spec, 31 stamps. Yeah, that's had a speedo change at some point with 31 stamps. Every MOT from new, that's the good news. The provenance on this car is exceptional. Really lovely. Now you've seen in the press, haven't you? You've seen things like RS Cosworths, RS Turbos. They are starting to make monumental money. The XRs, even in this condition, still manage to make quite a value case for themselves. We've estimated this car at 11 to 13. There is a pile of paperwork that's as thick as a phone book with this car. So again, if you really are interested, come and have a look. If you're a Ford collector, you want a nice, usable car for your collection, something that you can drive out on a sunny day. It's just so nice. Come and have a look at the interior where they sag, particularly the seats on these, the bolsters and the fabric really sags on these early XRs. Look at that. That really is very taut. Toy look a toyga, that one. Very pretty, unmolested, factory correct car. Smashing, really love that. 11 to 13, that could be yours. Other end of the scale, do you like a Mark IV or do you like a Mark III? The earlier front, I like this. I think these are very nice, these early fronts. This one, which is a 1.3 GL, a credible 23,000 miles. This car screams and shouts that that mileage is correct. And every little bit of this car just looks proper. You never see them, do you? 23,000 miles, factory correct spec, two former keepers, original Bullisdale, just lovely. Really nice interior. I'm really getting into these cars. They've obviously had a tiny bit of paint. You can see that, it's been done very well. But just completely standard, unmessed about with ordinary stuff, the stuff that was on every street corner that everybody's mum had, everybody's dad had, everybody's nan drove to the shops. I think there's a real charm and appeal for this kind of stuff and you don't need to spend a huge amount of money to buy them. So two former keepers, just lovely. We've driven this, it drives mint. Just like you'd expect an old 42 that's been serviced all of its life. You could buy that car for somewhere between four and a half and five and a half grand and I think Look at Mark 1 prices, look at Mark 2 prices. Everybody always wants to buy an old Ford Escort because they mean so much to all of us because we all had one in the family. Everybody's family had some kind of Ford Escort. That's good news, four and a half to five and a half grand. Oosh, other end of the Ford Escort sale. To me, the hottest and sexiest Mark 3, the Escort RS Turbo will always look amazing in white. Obviously, Princess Diana's car set the bar at 11 million pounds for this market. You could buy this one for a much more sensible, 25 to 27, 59,000 kilometers. Why is it so cheap, Paul? Because, like our little super sport, this is left-hand drive. We need to have a talk about left-hand drive cars, guys. Don't put yourself off buying an amazing car just because the steering wheels are on the wrong in inverted commas side. Because I guarantee you spend a couple of days with a left-hand drive car, you'll get totally used to it. And the advantages of buying a left-hand drive car which are generally from a much nicer climate. As I say, this one's from Spain with a lot of Spanish service history. Would you rather have a right-hand drive with loads of bodywork or potentially loads of hidden rust or a left-hand drive without any of the above? For me, it's always left-hand drive. Half of my car collection is left-hand drive for that reason. I'd much rather buy a car from a hot country in really nice condition that needs no work and get used to sitting on the wrong side. It was like I say, it's probably a day at most to do it. You'll never go back. Bid on that one because it's a way of buying a beautiful RS in incredible condition for probably at least 10 grand less than sitting on the other side. And of course, when you come to sell them, it's a global market these days. You can see, we sell a lot of cars from here that go all over the world. We ship them everywhere. So when you come to put it back into the auction, we will have people bidding on this car from France, Germany. We've already registered bidders from overseas on this car. It's very easy to sell a left-hand drive car to all of Europe. Because don't forget, this tiny island, we're the only people that drive with a wheel on the right in Europe. Everyone else drives on the left, so it's actually easier to sell a left-hand drive car. Oh, so many cool fast forwards. There's, I did notice on another reputable auction website this morning, we were having a look at Cosworth prices. There's a very nice white 4x4 standard Cosworth with twice the mileage of this. This is a Rouse Sapphire 304 4x4. Very, very cool. Andy Rouse, if you don't know, was one of the most decorated and brilliant touring car drivers in the Sierra during that period. He was immense, worth a Google. Check Andy Rouse, 
in his heyday at his prime, pedalling the Sierra like his life depended on it. But he wasn't just a brilliant driver, he was an incredible engineer as well. So he also used to prepare a lot of Sierras. Here is one of his magnificent creations. Now you'll have seen uh, with our friends at Silverstone, they had a beautiful RS500 that went through the block with bits, with commissions, £600,000. So that's the top of the Sierra market. You could buy this beautiful Rouse credited car with 19,000 miles in manual, four before for maybe 30 to 40. And that's the difference. These are the bargain, the bargain of the Sierra Cosworth Cannon at the moment. If you're a fan of Spender as well, you'll love a four door Cosy. But in some ways more usable because it's four door, certainly better value for money. And what's the color you want a Cosy in? Moonstone blue. This has it all. The Rouse connection, the best color, really nice, guaranteed mileage, beautiful condition. As I say, you could, somewhere between 30 and 40 grand, you'll be taking that car home. So less than a 20th of the crazy RS500. That's a bargain. Walk with me. We'll talk about this in another video. Just a little sneaky glimpse there. Look, this isn't in this auction. This is coming in the next auction. But if you want to phrase an ask BMW 327, one of the nicest ones in the world is coming in our next auction. So there's a sneaky peek. Didn't show you that. 1947 MGTC. MG is again one of the stalwarts of the classic car scene. So much car for the money. 1947, obviously these TCs look a little bit older than they are. It's had a full nut and bolt restoration. It's got all the correct bits and pieces. It's an original right-hand drive car. Again, a lot of these are imports. This is a UK car and it's stunning. The interior is perfect, it's beautiful. And we estimate this at 28 to 32,000 pounds. It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. You have to be a slightly smaller enthusiast. If you are the height of me, we have other MGs for you in this sale. We've got a beautiful MGA, a couple of lovely MGBs. They're maybe for you if you're above six foot four, but if you're under six foot, this is a very, very lovely car and I would recommend you come and have a look at that. 28 to 32, exceptionally nice and needing nothing. Ooh, this one, oh, I get quite excited about this one. We have a, a lot of these, so when Porsche had their 70th anniversary, they encouraged all of the dealers to build a car in the color of the 918 in this special color. All the dealers got to build one and Porsche themselves built a car. Now this car, this 944, which is showing 86,000 miles, but there aren't many parts of this car that have done 86,000 miles, it's manual, and Porsche themselves built this car to celebrate their 70th anniversary. And there are bills for this car, which is the turbo, for 140,000 pounds. So Porsche went through it front to back, nut and bolt, and restored it. So if you want a car, this is kind of almost like owning a Singer. Imagine you could go to Porsche and say, Porsche, please build me a nut and bolt recommission restoration of a 944 turbo. They would charge you 140,000 pounds for that. That's what this car is. That's what this car is with all the bills to prove it. It's absolutely stunning. If you are a true Porsche collector, this is one of one. People have restored 944s before, but the provenance of having the manufacturing import to do it to this standard and specification, and of course the access to the parts bin that they have being the real deal, you'll never buy that car again. We're estimating that 45 to 50, which is a lot of money for a 944, but it's a third of what it costs to build. So if you want one, you do want that one, and it's beautiful, it's flawless. It's the only way to describe it. This is very nice. We love a Lotus Carlton, the Autobahn Stormer. 46,000 mile, 1993 Lotus Carlton. Exceptionally nice in manual, right hand drive. Number 847 if you want to check it out, if you're an aficionado. Been with the same owner for 25 years, so we know everything about this car. Four former keepers. It's had the timing change done. It's had a lot of future proofing done by Southwest Lotus Center. Six grand fairly recently spent. Brand new Toyos on it and a really nice book pack. It's an exceptionalized car. The only thing I'd do is maybe just get the paint corrected. It's got a few very light swells in it, but just so level and so clean and so complete and so correct, that's a very nice car. We know the price for these is going ridiculous. This, I think, represents the chance to buy a semi-sensible one, 75 to 85 grand because the car is so nice. So get your detailer to spend a day on it, you'd have a concourse car. It really is that good. What a lovely, lovely thing that is. 75 to 85. Elliot's pointing me over here to the 420G. Isn't this great? So it's 420G Mark 10, depending on how you look at it. These are great. I drove one of these in Malta, had a real pleasure. I was out in Malta with Fuzz Fun enough last year and uh, my friend Charles very kindly let me borrow his 420G. So imagine driving one of these in the sunshine in Malta. Life was as good as it could be. It doesn't get any better than that. The thing about these is, 
And Twin Cam, actually, if you look on YouTube, Twin Cam has done a very wonderful video on this actual car. It's phenomenal. There's not many of them left. It's had a great recent refurbishment. It's got its heritage certificate. We've driven this. It's stunning. It's had a full interior refurb at some point to a very high, and I would wager, expensive standard. Look at that. Can't really convey, guys, how big these cars are. These are American big on a British car. And that's why I think the Mark 10 has so much presence. They're just a bit naughty, aren't they? A little bit naughty boy, bank robber, East End gangster, but in a very, very attractive color combination. And again, despite the fact they're so rare, so usable and so lovely, they haven't started to make ridiculous money yet. You could buy this somewhere between 14 and 16. I guarantee you turn up at a car show, you probably won't see another one. And just a wonderful way to travel. Having spent a day in one in Malta last year, I would love to own that with bells on. It's just a beautiful, wonderful way to waft around in timeless luxury. I have a lot of time for that car. Talking of cars that really aren't a huge amount of money for how wonderful they are, 1954 Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn. We always sell a lot of 70s and 80s Rolls-Royces here because they're such good news. I particularly like this era. This screams old money. You could turn up at a top-end hotel, country club, or even park outside Harrods. I'd imagine they will part the ropes for you. If you turn up in this, it is showing 110,000 miles, offered with the original sales brochure, all of its original body panels, it's got the original Zenith carburetor. What else has it got? Modern indicators have been put on, which is a very good news. A history file that goes all the way back to 1972, believe it or not, before I was born. And what a nice thing. Again, just super original, super complete. Get lovely suicide doors on these. Very, very special place to sit. Now, you're thinking, I would like that. I would look good in that. And believe me, you would. 38 to 42,000 pounds. Now, what does that buy you in the current performance of luxury car canon? 40 grand doesn't buy you an awful lot of car, does it? You could pull up anywhere, and I do mean anywhere in that car, for 40 grand, and you would look like the richest, most successful person there without looking like you're trying, and that's a very hard thing to do in a classic car. Timeless elegance, that's what that car is. 38 to 42, take that home, I will be envious. Now, I am a sucker for a core niche, and this one has to be the best color I've ever seen. This is a 1981 Corniche, 50,000 miles. It's stunning, it's beautiful. All the owner's manuals are here, detailed history. We've even got the shake that ordered this car in this beautiful aubergine color. All the correspondence between him and the factory. It's called Wildberry Metallic, this color. It's pearlescent with a magnolia hide. So many invoices. Basically, 2021, two and a half grand just to recommission it. In 2021, there's a complete strip and color change to this beautiful color for nearly 10,000 pounds. This is a very recent 10,000 pound paint job, which is why it looks so good. New lambswool rugs. Oh, so just, should we just drink it in? Should we just take a moment to look at it? It's flawless, guys. It really is. And again, talking about Rolls Royces that look, you know, do you want to buy yourself a new Bentley? This is going to be 70 to 80 grand. So you'd be buying a second hand Bentley for that. Or do you want to turn up in this? Which next year will be worth 80 grand, and the year after that probably 80 grand, and then the year after that 85 grand. This is going to hold its money, it's gonna look lovely. You're gonna feel like a rock star, literally you're gonna feel like Elton John, driving up and down some sunny boulevard in I think one of the prettiest and most beautiful color combination corniches I have ever seen. 70 to 80 grand, treat yourself. And if you can't afford it, I often buy a lot of cars that I can't afford. Our friends at Fast and Funded, they'll put a beautiful finance package together for you. You can probably be smoking that round for 600, 700 quid a month. Life's too short, buy the car that you wanna buy. Jensen Interceptors, I have a love-hate relationship with Jensen Interceptors. They are, of course, one of the most beautifully wonderful cars. My advice is never restore a Jensen Interceptor, buy a car that someone else has restored because it's much more fun that way. If you've ever seen the show, we restored a beautiful one, the Express car, and lost an utter fortune. You could be the person that avoids that by buying this car that has already been restored. 55,000 miles, it's a 1974 with electronic overdrive, which is always a very nice thing to have. Work was carried out in 2016 to the value of 5,700 quid. There are bills over the last 10 years for 22 grand, so it's been looked after properly, because that's the other thing with Jensen's. Don't buy one where someone's skimped on the maintenance. That will just give you a world of headache. This car is ready to go. Factory aircon, Webasto roof, Pirelli Cinturatos. You know my thing about always check the tires. The owner will tell you how much care they've taken by the brand and condition of tire that they fitted. This has got Cinturatos. Records of ownership from new. And it's got loads of invoices from Property Garage. If you don't know about those guys, check them out. They are wonderful. We film with them. 
They are the experts. If someone's taking their car to them, not cheap, because they are wonderful. They're the best in the business of what they do. So the fact that this car has been maintained there, I would wager this is gonna give you such a wonderful life and such an easy life for 45 to 55 thousand pounds and if you've ever restored one you'll know it's very very easy to do it properly to double that so that's a bit of a bargain in a very lovely and very 70s color with a vinyl roof just says i think suave that's what that says to me but well, sticking with the west midlands as fuzz isn't here sticking with jensen this is the more affordable end of the jensen scale jensen healy's are abound you don't see that many ever come up for sale but this i think is a particularly nice one with the smaller bumpers as well it is a 1973, as we all know, that's the best year for anything, because it was the year I was born. It's got 10,000 showings, so I imagine it's had an extensive restoration and the Speedo has been reset. It's had a full shakedown and major service, including a timing belt in 2023. It's just had two grand spent. I love that. I love it when people spend money to put the car in for sale. It means they care, it means they're bothered, it means they don't want any comebacks. It means they're making sure the car is perfectly set, ready for sale. It's got a rolling road readout at 172 horsepower. What? What? This is, this is a bit of a hot rod. This 172 horsepower, this is going to be an awful lot of fun. So what's it has? So restoration and refurbishment, full respray, new leather interior. In 2003, 18 grand was spent on this car. Spacks adjustable shocks, was driven here. Loads of history, including the statement of origin from Jensen and the history file going back to the 1990s. But to be honest, they had me at 172 horsepower. That's an absolute weapon. This is 45 to 55. This is 14 to 16 and the roof comes off, and it's got 172 horsepower. I love that. You won't see many on the road, you won't see many in that condition, you won't see many with a much more desirable little bumpers. Fabulous, fabulous car, rare drop head with a lot of fun. Onwards to this, one of the stalwarts of the classic car scene, something the safest repository for your money, probably as safe as putting it in a bank, Stick it in a decent old 911. You will never, ever lose money on an old 911, and it defines a practical sports car. There's a reason that everybody likes to collect these. I have one of these. I have an 82 convertible. They are magnificent. This is a 1987 911 Carrera 3.2 Target Sport, so the bigger engine. It's just a very nice car. It's got very nice bodywork. It's got the upgrade Fushion as well, the 16 inches. Impeccable interior. Always check on a soft top. Sun visors are very good. I wish mine were that good. It's, only, it's had a great restoration. It's one of the best examples we've seen. It drives as well as it looks. And it's the color combination you want, basically. And it's got the gearbox you want. So it's done 137,000 miles. Never be put off by a well-serviced, well-maintained 911 that has a higher mileage. Because these are the cars that people buy to drive, basically. You don't buy a 911 to tuck it away. You buy it to enjoy and use, and they're much better when you do. And don't forget, these engines, if they're maintained, can get to 200,000 miles, particularly on a low-stress non-turbo like this. Very cool car. 38 to 42,000 pounds, you could be taking that home. And it's probably the only classic sports car you'll ever need. Targa 911, just beautiful. Another great Porsche. This is another 944 Turbo. They're not that common, yet we've got two in our sales. This is a left-hand drive. Loads of left hookers in this sale. Oh, there you go. Let's have a look at that. And it's going to come through and show you the majesty of this. So this was supplied in Germany, which the wags amongst you will be saying, yes, Paul, they were all supplied in Germany. But this was a German market car, which is why it's come to us in left-hand drive. Lovely colour combination, this gorgeous burgundy interior with white, which I think is so period. It's 1986. Large book of invoices in German. Service book is stamped up to 118,000 miles and it's now showing 173, but I'd imagine that would probably be in kilometers, being a German car. It's super clean and super straight. And we keep saying this, don't worry about a left-hand drive car. They represent something of a bargain. It often means you get a better spec or better condition car for your money and you will adjust to it in a very short space of time. Plus when you come to sell it, Europe is literally your oyster. So do consider a left-hand drive car. I personally prefer them, and I think you get a lot more car for your money. So that would be a bit of me. Check it out, come and have a look. It's exceptionally clean, and it drives beautifully, as all maintained old Porsches do. Talking to which, 1982 928S. This has got 222,000 miles showing. It's kind of a misnomer, really. The mileage is correct, but there is not one part of this car that has not been gone through, whether it's the bodywork, the interior, the engine, the gearbox, very low owners. If you're considering this car, which we've estimated at 20 to 22,000 pounds, it's a rare non-sunroof, which gives you a bit more headroom, makes the shell a bit stiffer and lighter. 
has got an unbelievable history. The amount of money that has been spent on this car over the years will blow your mind. So don't worry about the 220,000 miles. It's had so much money spent, so much money spent, it will make your head spin. It's so clean, so perfect, so neat, so tidy. I would like to own that. And then again, the 928s are in the ascendancy because the 911 prices have gone ridiculous. So what it's doing is it's pulling up the 944 and 928 prices. Because in some ways, don't forget this was the car that was designed to replace the 911. So as a GT, as a wafter to take you across continents, that's probably the better car. And actually, these front engine cars have much more inherent balance than the rear engine 911. So unless you are a super talented wheel man, if you want to drive really quickly, you probably want to do it in one of these two. And the fact that is, look, there's the big thing. Look at the gear lever, try and find me a manual car. So hard to find a manual car, that's a manual. This is cute, isn't it? Frog Ice Bright, I love them. Certain classic cars you just want to cuddle and pick up. This is definitely one of those, a 58 Healy Frog Ice Bright, but it's got a Shellsley aftermarket body kit made by AG Thorpe in Derbyshire. So that's why it looks a bit different. I think it looks more attractive than a standard Sprite. Some of us have some fun with this. Three former keepers, mini lights, weather gear, tastefully modified, I think very period modified. So you've got your buckets, you've got your very cool front and rear clams, which make it look a little bit more exciting. A bit more fun than a standard Sprite. These just are an absolute hoot, basically. Again, if you're massive, maybe don't bid on this, because if you're my size, you probably won't fit in comfortably, but a lot of fun, very, very cute. People will stop you at traffic lights. And we've estimated that at nine to 11,000 pounds. Not a huge amount of money for what is a huge amount of fun. Moving on to this, one of my favorite cars in the sale, this. So this is, if you wanted a Mercedes 2.3 Cosworth, you've probably missed the boat. The price of those now is obscene. They're worth so much money. But here is the next best thing. Here's a 2.6, which in itself is a very rare and desirable car. There's not many of those left. But somebody has put the full kit on. So you've got the full Cosy kit, which I think is exceptionally nice, in probably the best color they did as well. So it's the same family have had this car for 29 years. It's showing 117,000 miles, which for a Mercedes is nothing, particularly because it's got a very large service history file. It's got factory leather, really beautiful spec. And you'd buy this car. I mean, six to 7,000 pounds would buy you this car. And I am struggling to think, guys, I'm struggling to think of a car I'd rather own for seven grand than that. But just look at it, look how it sits. First of all, we're going online and have a look at Cosworth prices, then sit down with a strong cup of tea and then have a bid on this, because this would probably be a third or a quarter of what they're now fetching for a car in this condition. And it's just beautiful. And of course, wonderful color, wonderful interior. Have a look inside. And we keep talking in these videos about practical classics, cars you can use every day, that you can buy for, I don't know, the cost of about two years finance payments on a modern car. And instead you could have that forever and watch it fly up and up and up. And as Cosworth prices go up, this will follow because it looks as nice, but it's a lot cheaper. Now, Jim Agatha, he's consigned this car and I think secretly he wants to own it. 2003 Jaguar XKR 4.2, oosh. Nice looking car anyway, but the best wheel option they ever did and very, very tastefully done. 73,000 miles, automatic of course. It is beautiful, this car. A perfect headlining, an exceptionally nice interior. And these still are an absolute bargain. I mean, you are talking here of a car that will spank an Aston Martin, and this could be eight and a half to nine and a half grand. And actually, you know, in the right light, you're talking DB7 era. You can see shades. When you park this next to an Aston Martin DB7, in some profiles, I think these are the prettier car. Certainly a lot cheaper to live with, an awful lot cheaper to buy. And that one is particularly lovely. And for me, it's the wheels and the stance that make that. So an XKR, very quick, very drivable, very capable car for not a lot of cash. This is lovely, isn't it? Look at this. VTEC four-wheel steer, 1996 Honda Prelude. I have a huge amount of love for this. It's a manual car as well, 62,000 miles. We think, according to DVLA data, there's nine of these left. And I guarantee the other eight aren't as nice as this. It's stunning, absolutely beautiful. Bodywork is gorgeous, interior is very nice. Look, there's a tiny, just a tiny pull. Is anything, it's just a tiny pull on the stitch there. I'm really struggling to fault it. It's almost perfect. Original spec, three previous owners, really great service history. It's been in a collection, which is why it's so exceptionally nice. You can't find these. 
Honda prices, Japanese cars in general from the 90s are such good news at the moment. The top of this market is heralded by things like the Supra that we sold for a lot of money quite recently. You've got things like the Skyline. And because the top of that market is so high, the really nice affordable stuff like this, the sports stuff and coupes, is starting to make really good money. We've estimated this at a sensible nine to 10. It might make more. Such a beautiful car and such a rare car now. So you never see them, nine left. You could own the nicest one in the UK. Moving on to this. The 2001 Mercedes SLK 320, it's done 16,000 miles from new, and boy can you tell. Let's have a little walk around, the wheels are perfect, the bodywork is perfect. As you'd imagine, after 16,000 miles of not much sitting on it, it's gorgeous inside. It's got this lovely diamond turned effect dash as well. Factory correct spec, two former keepers, it was wax sold underneath in 2019, and it is stunning. It's even got its traffic reflectors and first aid kit, matching continental tyres original stamps in the book it's just gorgeous it's it, it really is an immaculate car that one but again because of what these are these haven't made huge money yet this is seven to eight thousand pounds if you want a car again eminently usable practical classic that looks the business and needs nothing here's your car so that's the end of this video we've got two other car videos one other bike video so make sure you've registered to bid manaparkclassics.com and we'll see you i hope on saturday morning 22nd fun starts at nine o'clock